the future technologies to become immortal. Undoubtedly, the fear of death, encoded in our DNA to improve our chances of survival, is one of the least pleasant characteristics we are forced to live with. The idea that our life must have an end and there is nothingness is not all that attractive. So it is not surprising that in the course of its history, man has imagined countless ways to circumvent death. Immortality or eternal life is the concept of surviving forever for an indefinite period of time without facing death or overcoming death itself. Immortality can be intended in two main meanings, physical and spiritual. Physical immortality is generally conceived as the endless existence of the mind from a physical source, such as a brain or a computer. Spiritual immortality is generally conceived as the endless existence of an individual after physical death. Immortality has been a source of inspiration in various science fiction movies and series. For example, the protagonist of one of the longest running science fiction television sagas, Doctor Who, is an alien from the planet Gallifrey who has the ability to regenerate. If he is fatally injured or ill, he initiates a cell regeneration process, which essentially causes him to take on a new body. The gimmick was introduced in 1966 when the first doctor's interpreter, William Hartnell, was no longer in a health condition to continue playing his role and had to be replaced by another interpreter, Patrick Trotton. However, the regeneration mechanism has become an important element of the mythology of the series, and to date we have reached the 12th Doctor. Of course, the Doctor is not immortal. Besides the fact that the number of regenerations he has available is limited, he can still be killed. Another very interesting example of an immortal creature in the true sense of the word in science fiction is found in the Star Trek saga. In the first episode of The Next Generation, the race of Qs is introduced. Beings who, in addition to being immortal, are omnipotent. As in the best Star Trek tradition, the feature of immortality is later explored in its philosophical and moral implications in the Star Trek Voyager episode, Right to Death. In fact, in the episode, the crew of the Voyager accidentally frees an exiled Q who has decided to renounce his immortality and end his life going against the rules imposed by his society. But would it be possible to become immortal? In this video, we will take stock of the situation on research in this area, and we will see the technologies being studied. We begin our roundup of hypothetical technologies to become immortal with hibernation. Present in many science fiction films such as James Cameron's 2009 Avatar, the protagonist and the other human soldiers are hibernated for six years on the journey to the moon Pandora. Cryonics is a technology that aims to extend life expectancy. In practice, it consists in lowering the body temperature of people declared legally dead until the liquid nitrogen temperature is reached. The technique must be started within half an hour of death. At that point, the decomposition stops and the hope is that, in the future, it will be possible to bring these people back to life and eventually cure them with advanced scientific procedures. A person kept in such conditions is considered a cryopreserved patient and not really dead. The procedure begins in the recovery room of the hospital where the patient is dying. After cardiac arrest occurs and legal death is declared, Technicians intervene who mechanically restore ventilation to the lungs and blood supply to the brain. At this point, the body is immersed in cold water to be transported. When the body arrives in one of the cryogenesis centers, the cryoprotective solution is injected intravenously to prevent it from freezing all the tissues. The body is then immersed in liquid nitrogen and brought to a temperature of minus 125 degrees centigrade and after three hours to the final temperature of minus 196 degrees. The staff of the center is in charge of changing the liquid nitrogen frequently, indefinitely. It is also possible to resort to the procedure of conservation of the only head called neuroconservation, neuropreservation, which consists in conserving only the brain, in the belief that in the future it will be possible not only to reanimate the cryopreserved bodies, but also grow new bodies in which to store the brains. The brain is kept in its natural place, the skull. The head is cut from the rest of the body at the height of the seventh cervical vertebrae, 
Again, after a gradual lowering of temperature, the head is placed in a small Dewar container and immersed at minus 196 degrees for long-term storage. The possibility of cryopreservation is based on three main hypotheses, which, however, have never been confirmed by science at the moment. An individual's memory and personality remain intact within the structure of the brain even when his activity is interrupted after clinical death. Cryopreservation procedures do not in any way affect the structures of the brain responsible for memory and personality. It will be possible in the future to restore the cerebral capacities of cryopreserved brains. The technique is expensive and controversial. To date, no one is able to predict whether it will be possible to bring hibernating bodies back to life because the technology that allows to do so does not yet exist. There is currently no guarantee that a cryopreserved patient can be awakened because there is still no technique capable of doing this. And even if we succeeded in reviving him, we do not know under what conditions we could awaken this person. If you decide you want to be hibernated, you have to be quite rich. In the United States, the figures are between $160,000 and $200,000 to keep a body, and $80,000 if only the head freezes. Russia is cheaper where the preservation of the body costs $26,000, while if you opt for the head alone, the figure is around $18,000. Would you like to be hibernated? Write it in the comments. What if hibernation is not successful, thus causing damage to some parts of the body? No problem. You could clone parts of the body and replace the old ones. Many scientists around the world are working on creating human organs using 3D printers loaded with living cells, which could one day make organ donors superfluous. Or life could be extended by using biotechnology and medicine to continue renewing and rejuvenating the body. Nobody wants to live forever at 95, but if you could rejuvenate your body at 29 or 30, many might want to. This could be done in several ways, including genetic engineering that prevents or reverses cellular aging. But why do we get older? There is no single explanation, but the theories of aging can be traced back to two different strands of thought, namely that according to which aging is a genetically programmed event, which manifests itself through changes in the functioning of the nervous, immune, and endocrine systems and that of the progressive accumulation of damage caused by the influence of the environment. Currently, it seems that aging depends on a series of genetic and environmental causes, to which the various species of different longevity would respond with more or less effective defense methods. From an evolutionary point of view, the existence of aging could be justified by the need for the resources consumed by an individual who has already carried out its reproductive and care function for the offspring whose organism may have been damaged during life, be used by individuals of subsequent generations. Due to aging, the cells of the human body lose their ability to renew themselves. However, stem cells are constantly reproducing and contain an exact, new, and healthy copy of our DNA. Between the two daughters of the mother's cell, only one inherits the problems. If one understood how to obtain the results of perfect immortality of the other daughter, she would never grow old. Always studying for immortality, or in any case to age well, there is also the manipulation of materials at the nanoscale, that is on dimensional scales of less than 100 nanometers, equal to about one billionth of a meter. Some nanorobots could travel through blood and perhaps repair aging damage to cells. Nanotechnology could also cure certain diseases, such as certain types of cancer, by removing cancerous cells from the body. Would you try these treatments? Let us know in the comments. The most interesting idea, however, comes from Russia and is called Russia 2045. Its purpose is to save the mind of a human being in its entirety and then load it onto a hard drive, forever saving the essence or almost of a human. Everything will happen no earlier than 17 years. Be sure to join the channel, leave us a like and click on the bell. You will help us to make products of even higher quality. The idea was born from the Russian entrepreneur Dmitry Yitzkov, who a few years ago founded Project 2045, an organization that networked a community of experts, mainly Russians and Americans, in the field of neuroscience and the extension of life. The director of development is the Belgian scientist Philippe van Niederveld. His goal is not to heal the body so that it can live long, 
but to transfer human consciousness into a cyborg, a kind of very advanced robot by 2045. The technical term is combination of brain emulation and robotics, by transferring the mind, the memories, the consciousness into a machine that does not deteriorate and that can be fixed and replaced. One would become not virtually but tangibly immortal. It seems that Dmitry Itzkov has stated that the technology necessary for the transfer of consciousness in a machine is already 65% ready today. Moreover, experiments have already been carried out on mice whose hippocampus has been removed, which plays an important role in the formation of memory and the transformation of the same from short to long term, by replacing it with a microchip without the animals having lost memories. By transferring consciousness to a computer, we would become a real artificial intelligence that should first manifest itself in a hologram capable of feeling. The human computer could then remotely control a cyborg who would go around the world communicating at the base, what the five senses feel in creating memories. A true humanoid artificial body that would replace our body of flesh, blood and bone. In this way, our individual human conscious, at the command of one or more peripherals, that do not perish and can be replaced would live forever. The whole process, envisaged by Project 2045, born in 2011 and made public two years later, includes a series of stages with a five-year or ten-year deadline. 2020 is the year when the first cyborgs remotely controlled by the human mind should have been ready. It's not known at the moment the progress of the work, but it is likely that it is behind the expected table given that the XPRIZE Foundation, linked to the Russian billionaire, has recently given away $10 million in a scientific competition for the one who by 2021 will be able to build a robot that looks like a person in all respects and that can be controlled and managed at a distance of at least 100 kilometers. The 2025 goal will be the isolation of the brain from the rest of the human body, which should be extracted at the end of a natural life to be transferred to a machine. Within the next 10 years, a so-called avatar will be created, that is a perfect replica of a physical body equipped with artificial intelligence into which a personality is transferred. By 2045, the theoretical final date of the process, the total elimination of all physical support will take place and the individual will survive only on a digital level. One can legitimately ask whether becoming immortal will be within everyone's reach or whether it will be an evolution reserved only for the very rich who can afford it. The Project 2045 organization directly answered the question on the official website. To date, carrying out an artisanal creation, a humanoid robot of average quality similar to man costs about $300,000. However, when we get to the day when we can't afford to mass produce this technology on an industrial scale, we expect the costs to be similar to those of the automobile. Be sure to join the channel, leave us a like and click on the bell. You will help us to make products of even higher quality.